Hello, hi. Fernando Ronick. How are you? Oh, hi, George. Let me share my screen. First thing, remember to follow us on Azureta and, and youtube.com Azureta YouTube channel. There's a yes, lot if, of videos there. Thanks, Fernando, for helping. And If you are watching this, just click on subscribe. It supports us and keep us making more COVID. So, so show your experiment. You are, so you are running K3D on Rancher OS, is that? That's it. And you are part of my experiment, you see? <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> I just I took this picture here from my, my desk. Fernando was waiting for this recording. What we have here, we have, um, we have this desktop here at the bottom under my desk. You know, it's like a HP, workstation with eight cores, uh, 22 gigabytes of memory. And I use that like as a server to play with Branch OS and Kubernetes and Docker for many years, more than three or four, I don't know, three or four years, maybe begin of Branch OS. And I keep updating that. And I just, you know, updated after almost two years without doing any update uh, in a half, I just did upgrade. And now have the latest version of 1.5.6 of French OS running on that desktop. And I'm from my laptop here, I'm connecting, doing a SSH on this CPU here. And that's how Ranch OS works. Ranch OS is like um, operate system using Docker. Everything runs as a Docker container. You have the Linux kernel and all the, the System containers are Docker containers. And the way that they did, they have a system Docker and they have a user Docker. And they have two Docker demons running on the machine, one for the system, another for the for the user container. Let's see how that works. Looks crazy, but it's oh. quite fun. And, you know, it's there for a while. And it's very stable and, you know, maintain operate system still. Let's see if Rancher is going to keep maintaining, I hope, because they like. And that's my version. I, I, I was running our old version from 2018. You see here, 2018, 142. And I want to, you know, I installed that on bare metal. was pretty much get a, you know, a range of ISO as a Linux. And just, I installed that a long time ago. And um, okay, the only way to access this is doing SSH. There is no UI, there is nothing. Very lightweight server. What I did today, um, you know, I have my SSH key. I did a SSH on the Rancher server. And then, sorry. And then from that, I run, you know, sudo Rancher OS upgrade. Then I did upgrade for the latest version. What they do, as Rancher is, is a Fernandez, is like a, a Docker, they just pull a Docker image with the latest version. Okay install that and you ask you to do a reboot. Once you do a reboot, you have the latest version running 156. And now cool. I have the latest version running. Okay. But let's show that. Yeah, let, let's go points. to the best part because you are running K3D. That's like Kubernetes or inside the Hunter OS. This is cool. Okay. Then I'm here on my laptop. Okay. Right. I have a, home network and branch is running on that IP on my home network. Okay, with that user, what I'm going to do, I have my SSH key here on my Windows subsystem for Linux Ubuntu and I'm going to SSH that branch instance. Voila, I'm inside Rancher now and now I have a Rancher. One thing I did after I did the upgrade, I changed my what they call Rancher console. That's a Docker container as well. And I, I'm using Ubuntu 18.04 now as a, my my console. How we do that? I made sure that I took notes to have all the steps that we need um, and I put here. That's the steps I wanna show for, for you guys today. You know, after I did my upgrade using, uh, um, you know, the, the Russia upgrade that I just show you, there are some commands you can do inside 
inside Rancher. One of the things, let's show you this one here. You can see all the system Docker. There's a command called system Docker PS. Then you can, you know, you have to sudo. You can see all the, all, you know, the, the system containers. Remember my slide showing this slide here that we have a system Docker. All those containers here, those are those, those, those system containers. And what I did, I run now uh, Ubuntu console. And that's that's container where I'm I'm SSHing is this one here. I'm inside that container here. Okay, that's how Rancher pretty much works. And um, you can see the version, you can see the upgrades, you can see all the you know, the versions that you can upgrade um, as well. Let's say I go here. You can see that you have all the ratio S versions. You can even uh, roll back version, Fernando. If you want to go back for a different version, you can do that. It's cool. pretty amazing, you know. You can roll back and and come back for versions if you want. That's how Rancher is easy because everything is a container. And um, one thing you can do, you know, you can switch. And if you go on my browser here, I have. Um, I have this switch in consoles page. There's a lot of documentation from Rancher. You can pick any of those consoles and you just do a switch, you know, choosing the console that you want. In my case, I pick Ubuntu. And, but you can use, and if you want to send to the OS, you can do it. And that's how I, I, I did it. Okay, and now I have, I have pretty much my Ubuntu running here. One thing I want to show as well is what we have to install, okay? If you, my idea to show today is running um, K3S, the Kubernetes, local Kubernetes, and K, using K3D means running K3S on Docker. And for that, we need two things. We need to install, you know, kubectl, and you need to install K3D itself. Then you can use the, those commands to do that. I have here already, if I go um, kubectl get all dash all, um, you can see that I have Kubernetes running already. What I did, I just use k3d, install K, k3d, and k3d is a command line that you can just take k3d cluster list and you can see that i have a, a k3d cluster running here if you do a quick show on that fernando k3d cluster delete if i delete the cluster and one thing is important here then now i don't have anything okay if i try to look my Kubernetes, i don't have anything I want to show that installation. K3D is still here. I don't have to install again. Just make sure that you follow those commands. And um, let's create one cluster. One important thing to use Rancher is you have the user mode here. Okay. See, that's the the Rancher user like a containers or user Docker different from the system Docker. That's the one that we are running here, Docker PS. You can see that the only thing that you have is like a, you know, a test that I was doing with a single container. And you have all those image because I have installed K3D already and the image is already in cache. Okay. And if I decide to create a cluster now, I want to make sure that I, you know, create this cluster using the host network because I don't want to create like a Docker, you know, bridge network. I want to set my network. Then I can do k3d dash network. 
and set the host network. Are you following that, Fernando? Yes, let's go. Let's create a cluster by using the host network. Okay, that's a very important thing. Make sure that you, when you're doing that, using the host network. Otherwise, K3D is going to create a bridge network and it'll be harder for you to expose things. And you have the image, you have the, you now have uh, K3D running. One important thing is they're going to skip the load balancer. Why? Because we're using host network. Then we don't need what K3D called the load balancer. It's not going to be required for us. Then it'll be even you know smaller, it'll be just K3D. If I now go keep CTL get all, I can see my cluster running again. You see that's still creating the cluster. The containers are not running yet, but you'll be see still container running now. Like maybe one second more. Still creating a little bit more time. Should be taking a little bit Fernando creating. There you go. Now we have pretty much the whole thing running. But the nice thing now is you have traffic that they install by default as an ingress controller, and you have these using the same IP as my, you know, Ranch OS host. Then if I go on that IP from my browser, I think I have this IP running here, even if I don't say anything, I can see that I have a not found. This is a response from, from traffic itself, from the ingress controller, okay? Um, anything that I want to use, I have now an ingress controller using the host IP. And it's quite easy to deploy anything. If you want to do a very simple test, just doing like a straightforward deployment from here, just let's say I Nginx, you know, reverse proxy, we can go here, say deploy Nginx, deployed, expose. Let's expose that on port 80,000, okay? Because we're using the port 80 for the uh, for the traffic ingress controller. I don't want to mix it up with the traffic. And I go back and get all. You see that's still painting here. They're going to be, when you do again, you can see that Nginx is using the same host IP, but we're using port 8,000 now. And if I go my browser and I now say port 8000, I have NGX yeah, running. running. Cool. Okay. Then look, I, you don't have to do that. You, you can use the easy uh, traffic and create, you know, a uh, 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 ingress uh, annotation. Then all your traffic can go through traffic as an ingress controller. But look quickly, you know, if I have a desktop desktop at home, maybe go here on Rancher. See how we can quick install Rancher. There's a lot of ways to install. Nice thing is you can you can use it like even Hyper V, VirtualBox, or even bare metal like I did to install Rancher in just one gigabyte of memory. You can do on Raspberry Pi, Pi, and anything, you know. And and you can do the same thing I'm doing here. Then I have this Fernando amazing Rancher. Oh, this is awesome. Can, you can have your own home cloud. I have 22 gig of memory, you know, 19 gig free, where I I can pretty much run, you know, anything. A lot of containers, yeah. Yeah. And, a bunch and, of containers. and you can see that all my Kubernetes running inside this, this Docker container. And you can create multiple clusters and you can play, okay, very lightweight. And that's it. Well, that's what I have to show today. I think it's very nice. I still oh. really enjoy Branch OS. I'm going to keep this server with Branch OS, I think, for a while. And that's my playground here from my, you know, say that's my desktop. I'm just SSH inside this, this desk, amazing desktop I was showing here. And that's it, Fernand. Oh, cool. That's an awesome experiment.
It is, I think, is a, uh, a nice thing. Yeah. And uh, make sure that you follow us here on, on, on Azureta. And if you like our videos, click on the notifications to watch our latest videos. Yep. Thank you. Thank and you. see Bye. you guys. Thanks, Fernando. And Thank you, George. Thanks for having me.